Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I uh, wanted to do a really quick video here because something cool happened last night. Uh, when you're a UFO hunter, you uh, just get lucky and sometimes stuff falls in your lap. By the way, if this is your first time here, please check out my channel for some of my UFO footage and a little bit about me. So I got a call from a friend last night and he told me, you gotta watch WMUR, uh, there's something on New Hampshire Chronicle tonight. And I have to say, I'm glad he did. A uh, quick shout-out to my buddy, uh, Frank Irizarry. So this is very well done and informative. Enjoy. It's really great. Uh, you know, when you look up at the sky, have you ever caught a glimpse of something you couldn't identify? It happens every day around the world, several times a month here in New Hampshire. Yeah, there are a lot of skeptics who balk at the notion of alien spacecraft. But what about a sighting from someone highly regarded who not only saw, but interacted with one. Jennifer Crompton sat down with a real-life Top Gun who shares his own out-of-this-world experience. The den of retired Navy <coughs> Commander David Fravor's Wyndham home holds memories of 24 years of military service, 18 as a Navy fighter pilot, a true Top Gun. Included in the room, two chairs from a ship's ready room. So this is really your desk when you're at sea. The one with the Black Aces squadron insignia, a gift when he retired as commanding officer in 2006, complete with names on the back. Uh, Doble is, uh, now he's Admiral Doble, Rear Admiral. And these are all of the officers that were in my squadron. Pictures of aircraft abound from the A-6 intruder to F-18s. So I flew basically all versions, uh, A, B, C, and D of this between either aircraft carrier or I was an instructor. Um, and then I was selected to go fly the Super Hornet, which is up there. But the craft he saw and interacted with while flying off the coast of Southern California in 2004 was nothing he'd seen before. When you saw what you saw, the UFO, you were flying, flying this. The start point. Mm -hmm. Discussed in social settings until November 2017, when he was urged to talk to the New York Times by a friend who ran the Pentagon's UFO program. And he goes, you're the one, you'll add the credibility piece to this. He goes, because they can't discredit what you saw. He goes, you're a trained observer with tons of experience in a senior position. His and otherworldly experience. So we were doing air defense exercise. Um, I was flying a Super Hornet. Uh, and so it was me and my backseater, who will remain nameless right now, uh, mostly because he's still on active duty. His drill with another jet was suddenly put on hold. The two of them redirected further out over the Pacific by their air defense ship that had just picked up something mysterious on radar that had been tracking for two weeks. And there's this blob of white water that has shape like a 737 and it's pointing this way. So there's something like a sea mount is what we think is under the water. We're like, well, that's kind of cool. And then down on the south side of it is the Tic Tac. The Tic Tac, as he refers to it because of its shape, was a craft hovering about 50 feet above the water. Its image later caught on video by a camera mounted on the other fighter jet. He moved in for a closer look. So as we get to about here, about 12 o'clock, and we're coming, we're descending, it goes, Whoa. And it turns like this, and it starts to mirror us, and it starts coming up. So I'm like, all right, that's pretty wild. So I go like this, and it's about the time I start pulling my nose onto it, and about here, it goes, and it's gone. As it goes, What they'd seen under the water, gone too. I was weirded out. That was our big joke. I, I told the guy in the back, I said, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty weirded out. And he laughed. He goes, oh, Skipper, so am I. Radio contact from the air defense ship miles away describing what their radar had been seeing. And these things would come down. There was like a dozen of them. They'd go, and they'd come down. They'd hang out at like 20,000 feet for a few hours, and then they'd go straight back up. The four airmen returning to their carrier, their experience not taken seriously, even when reported to the ship's intelligence center. My backseater has to go down there, and he's debriefing this, and they're... You know, men in black comes out. Uh, they start, you know, his jokes about men in black, signs, Independence Day, you name it. But those are the movies they started playing on the ship because they thought it was funny. And we're thinking, hey, maybe someone's going to come and talk to us, right? He says no one ever did. 
but that it was never a secret. After the first day, you know, people are like talking about it, and then it dies down really fast because there's others, there's always something new. So it became a great story over beers because people would say, We'd be talking, they'd go, hey, what's the coolest thing you ever saw? Well, you're fine, you know? Thinking, oh, you know, I did this or that, you know, over in Iraq. And mine is always, oh, I chased a UFO. He says he's more intrigued than concerned about the experience. What do I think it was? I think it was something not from this world. Honestly. The technology doesn't exist yet, and he believes that we can benefit from further investigation. Let's just say you figure out that how this thing works and it has some revolutionary power source that we have not thought of. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Because if you remember, the Earth used to be the center of the universe. And then we figured that was wrong. The topic raising out-of-this-world questions. What were they here for? Were they observing us? Were they watching? Was it communicating with something that was below the water? Because there's maybe stuff in the water. Will we ever know? don't know. Was it manned or was it, did it have something organic life form in it operating it? Because I've been asked, well, what if it was a drone? No, it might have been a drone. Maybe there was a big mothership up there and they all came down and hung out and then they all go back up and report to the mothership. I don't know. Sightings? Fairly common. Well, you'd be amazed how many people have found me on LinkedIn to go, hey, I had an incident or I was in the Air Force or my grandfather was in the Air Force. As for skeptics... There was four sets of eyeballs, and it wasn't like people were like, oh, there was a spot on the camera. No, we saw it with our eyes. I physically chased it. Over 13 years later, from the comfort of his home in Wyndham, he remains a believer. Well, you can see all the stars because we don't have any streetlights around here. And you look up and go, I wonder, what's up there? Well, there you have it. So I think this is a pretty big deal, and that's coming from a guy who went through some hardcore mass media debunking. I don't know. What do you think, guys? Is the media finally going to start treating this with a little respect, or are they just going for ratings? So thanks for stopping by, guys. I'll be back really soon here with some of my personal UFO footage. And please don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so I can keep bringing you out-of-this-world UFO evidence. Thanks again.